But Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, left in the land of Judah the poor people who had nothing, and gave them vineyards and fields at the same time. Now Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, gave charge concerning Jeremiah to Nebuzaradan, the captain of the guard, saying, Take him and look after him, and do him no harm, but to him, just as he says to you. This is the I will make this very simple. This kind of align with my sermon I started last week and I'm concluding today with part two. God said to tell you, he has authorized angels to take care of us. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Amen. And the message said that whatever we say, it shall be what? So. Amen. Yahweh has authorized illness of all kinds, especially this coronavirus. He says, Corona, don't touch my people. God has planted our vineyard with love. Has planted our vineyard with victory. Has planted our vineyard with peace. Has planted our vineyard with upliftment. So it is, and it shall be. And that is his promise unto us. He said, you see Jeremiah, make sure whatever he says, do for him. You see, take care of Jeremiah. Make sure he's taken care of. May Yahweh bless you in Yahshua's name. The topic of the sermon is understanding your cross and carrying them. I started last week with the introduction and I gave you some point. You have to understand your cross and when you understand that this is a cross from the Lord, you will be able to carry the cross very well. Today we are going to look on how we go and take cross that shouldn't be ours. You already have enough problems. You already have enough problems. You already know that when, as a human being, there are challenges that are already in your life. Why are you engaged in things that will go and add even more challenge that God did not plan or prepare for you? We will explore these parts. Last week, just for the benefit of those who were not here, you have to understand that a certain cross God has brought your way. It could be a cross that came from your child, from your ch or your children, or from your husband, or from your wife. You have no choice. Carry them. They're all yours. God planted it there. For that are going to be used to test your faith in the Lord. It is going to be a point that God is trying to let you understand that this is a cross he brought. And we saw what Jesus Christ did. He cried out one and he, he cried out loud that God, please don't let me carry this cross. But if it is your will that I must carry this cross, may your will be what? Done. done. And that is the prayers you need to pray at all times. Lord, this situation in my life, if it is your will, let your will be done. This thing that is holding me hostage for a long time, if it is your will, let your will be done. I promise you, God Almighty will take it away. Because Corinthians. The book of 2 Corinthians 10, 13, it told us that the Lord will not allow you to be tempted beyond your capacity. That when the temptation comes, he will show you a way out. So why are you bothered? Why are you bothered that there is a problem that has no solution? No. Whatever that comes from Yahweh, there is solution somewhere. He already told you. That before you were conceived, he knew who you were, what you will be. As long as you're a child of God, there is a challenge in your life. It is a cross from God. I begin with explaining the cross you go and get yourself. Those are cross that leave a lasting pain in your life. Those are cross that sometimes are not irreversible. You cannot reverse them. Those are cross when you carry them, it will be facing you, be facing it every day of your life. It's there. That is the difference between the one God gave you. Because the one God brought your way, he will show you a way out and he will bless you after that because you faithfully and diligently carry it with smile on your face. When Joseph, which is a story I shared with you, was sold by his brothers, he was sold, he was thrown in the pit, got out, and he was sold, and then he went into the uh, king's house and the wife tried to molest him and he ran away. He was accused. At the end of the day, he was thrown in jail. You see how God, remember I told you, the cross from God has a pattern. And he came out. 
Daniel was accused because they said nobody shall pray within a decree was passed and Daniel prayed even more and guess what? Out of jealousy, his fellow governors lied and accused him and guess what? He was thrown into the lion's den. First, look at the pattern of Daniel. He was first accused. Jealousy came into play and they threw him into the lion's den. And that is what the cross from the Lord will do to you. It will go in stages. You will, you will pray and then you find yourself in another temptation. You're like, I thought temptation is over. No. And then you feel like, okay, I'm about to come out of this. You will find yourself into another one. You're like, oh my God, what? I thought this is over with. That is a cross from God. Eventually, God will show you way. And that's why some of us will stand here and testify. Say, you know what? I have been plagued with this sickness for a long time. Once upon a time, I have been plagued with this illness. And look at me now, I am free. Some will come out and say, you know, I, I, I was jobless for this period of time. But I have not, I did not lack. That is a cross from the Lord. Some of us will testify and say, you know what? I went into one problem after another, another. And at the end of the day, oh, I am victorious. That is a cross from the Lord. Now, a cross you bring yourself. Here is the pattern of that. It starts with disobeying God. The Lord said, Thou shalt not steal. And you go to steal. And then when you steal, you get caught. It comes with some severe consequences. Let me use the story of David to tell you, show you how David went and carried a cross and that cross followed the family of David forever David went up to his pinnacle to relax and he looked across the other building saw another man's wife taking a bath and he was lost whenever you find yourself carnally lost over something that is not yours and you now nurse evil in your heart to acquire that thing, you are now about to carry a cross you can never, ever, ever. And that cross comes with everlasting cause. David said, wow, that guy's wife, Uriah, is very beautiful. He nursed an intention. He started carrying a cross God did not make for him. Look at all the cross. God brought his way. He understood them. Before he goes to war, he said, God, should I go to the war? And the Lord said, go, my son, I will be with you. And he will be victorious. Oh, Lord, should I go attack Goliath? God will say, yes, God, I will be with you. And he's coming out victorious. Those are the cross God brought David. Throughout David's reign, he was always going to war. And he was always winning war. Why? It was a cross God gave him. Now, he deviated a little bit. By going to carry a cross, we do that sometimes. We see somebody with a nice Nike shoes. How do we go and get the Nike shoes? You know what? You have nursed it in your heart. You are willing to do whatever it takes to get that Nike. You are willing to even go to your parents' purse and steal some money. You are willing to lie to make money. You are willing to sell your soul to make money to buy Nike by all means. Why? You are a, trying to take a cross that doesn't belong to you. Now David saw that woman nursing and he said, how do I get this woman? I'm the king after all. I'm the king. I can do whatever I want. Now when God bless you with a status, if you're not very careful, you will carry a cross that doesn't belong to you. What did David do? He took the woman. He committed an adultery. And then he went and carried another cross. Guess what? David failed to understand that that cross was not his. He was not the carrying cross that was not his. Think in your life today, what are the things you do, you are currently doing, or you have done, that is not a cross that is meant for you? Why are you stressing yourself? There is not enough cross to carry already. So you have to now understand, is this cross from God? Or is it a cross I am imposing on myself? It's called when you impose a cross on yourself. Now, David carried cross number two. You know what? I have co he committed adultery. And guess what? He said, you know what? I'm the king. He pregnanted the woman. And he said, okay. What I'm going to do is send the husband to war. And he sent Israel to war. What happened? 
He carried another cross and he made sure he put him in the most dangerous zone. Another way you know <clears throat> you are carrying a cross or about to carry a cross that is not yours, you come up with a cover up. Hey, if my wife know that I did this thing, now I must cover this up. If my husband know I did it, I have to cover it up. It's something grievous. Now, yeah, if you pray, the Lord will forgive you. The Lord, after God forgave um, uh, uh, David, but David felt the pain of the cross. He carried himself. He was in pain for a long time. Now, a cross, when you start planning of a cover-up, remember, a cross, how you know a cross that is not yours? First of all, you'll be lost after that thing. That is how you know. So you need to pay attention to these cues. Secondly, when you get that loss, secondly, you are able, you are not even thinking the rationale of the consequences of what you're about to do. You are just ready. I got I gotta have that thing. I don't care what it costs me, what it takes. And then you dive into it and commit the sin that the Lord said not to commit. And then you now commit the sin. You start planning of a cover-up. When you start thinking of a cover-up, guess what? It is now you are not carrying a cross that doesn't belong to you. Why? You fail to understand it is not your cross. When you understand it's your cross, you will not be that kind to cover it up. Brother, you will come to your brethren and the Lord and say, please, you will help me in prayers. This cross is too much. Pray that God will strengthen me. When I look at pregnant women, it's a cross from the Lord. And that's why we pray for the strength of God. And that's why they pray, God, help me carry this pregnancy to the full term. But a cross that is not from the Lord, there is element of cover-up, element of lying, and element of persuasion. It's all in it. Now, David killed an innocent man because he wanted his wife so badly or has carried a cross that was not his. Until God spoke to Jonathan, go to the house of David. Tell him he has sinned against me. So that's when you will now realize that, oh my goodness, it's too late. I have already carried the cross that is not mine. That is the reason why when you rise to go get married or when you rise to be in a relationship, that relationship comes with an automatic cross. It is not only husband and wife. Even you that is my brother in this ministry. When you come here, there is a cross you came with. And there is a cross I already have. That is yours to carry and yours that is mine to carry for you it is in the scripture when god said bearing one another which means you came with a cross and god is bringing you here for your cross to be carried for your cross to be alleviated and then you want to go and dump another pain onto you it is just so painful and shameful my brothers and sisters understanding your cross and carrying it if you do not understand it you will not carry it. But if you understand this is cross from the Lord, you will carry it with this man. But if it's not the cross from the Lord, you 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 be confused every day. There's no solution. You don't know what to do. Where do I go from here? In the book of Romans, it made us understand that, you know, um, you we've read it where the Lord said, "Vengeance is mine." If you understand. That this cross is not mine. God, fight for me. Fight my battle. I'm not going to fight my enemies. God will fight for you. But when you rise to fight a battle that is not meant for you, when you rise to fight a war that is not yours, the war will consume you. And I'll give you instances of war we fight that is not meant for you. It becomes a cross that is not meant for you. Why? You fail to understand this is not the cross that is meant for you. Shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Heaven and earth adore Him. Angels bow before Him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. We serve. Him. Angels bow before him. What a 
Almighty God we serve. Today, so many people are so hungry to be very rich. And they will take a family member they love to sacrifice them to make money. You see how someone will carry a cross that will lead them to hell. This is a common phenomenon in Africa. They want to be like others. They want to ride the best cars. They want to do the things people will bow instead of the things that will please God. And then they will commit a grievous sin and use lies, an innocent soul, just like David killed an innocent soul for his pleasure. It is nothing but carnal pleasure that leads us to carrying a cross that does not belong to you. It is nothing but material things that leads you to carry a cross that is not yours because you are so desperate. When you know that you are about to carry a cross that is not yours, another thing you will notice is desperation. Take note of this point. When you know, instead of saying, Father, let your will be done, you are desperate. There's a difference between having faith and desperation. Some people will misunderstood faith, desperation for faith. I have faith. No. Look at that thing. Would that thing lead you to self-destruction? When serious desperation come, you are angst, itch, you just itch, your whole body is itching you to get there, to do it. To do, it's okay, oh. I'm not discouraging you from not, not uh, being determined. Instead of desperation, change it to determination. Child, hallelujah. hallelujah. Don't be desperate. When you are desperate, you fail to understand that cross is not yours. You will see a young girl or a young boy who, see, who saw this beautiful, beautiful woman and, uh, and they can't get the heart and the eyes of that woman. They are thinking of her every day. It's okay when you see such. It's okay. I'm not against it. But you have to make sure you analyze other factors. Why your heart says, I gotta be with these individuals. Look at the qualities. That's, does that person have it for you to be happy in your marriage or for you to be happy in the rest of your life? If not, no, that is not a cross you should be ready to carry. When desperation comes, you do not see anything again. You just want it and forget about the consequences. And when it hits you, you're like, oh my goodness, I've made the best, worst mistake of my life. Don't be desperate, but follow things with prayers and determination. For that is what will help you to understand your cross fully. To understand and decipher or distinguish which cross is from the Lord and which one is not. If you are confused, bring it to the Lord in prayers. Someone read what is written in the book of 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 and 7. 1 Peter 5. So, whenever you are in a phase of confusion, whenever you are in a phase of not, you find yourself in desperation, I gotta have this, this oh, I love this woman so much, I love this girl so much. Man, I love. It's okay to love. It's okay to think about her. It's okay to think about him. But make sure you are not allowing the spirit of desperation. When you are desperate, you are gasping for air spiritually. When you are desperate, you are fighting for survival spiritually. And at the end of the day, it becomes a cross that you are not supposed to carry. And then. God has been thrown to the side and you are now leading yourself sheepishly without the guidance of the almighty Yahweh. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Do your best to be determined in faith, in prayers, in committing it to the hands of the almighty and that is when you begin to understand this is a cross from the Lord and the cross not from the Lord. When Jesus Christ said, Father, <laughs> Since I beg you to take this away, but if it is your will, let your will be done. So, my brothers and sisters, Romans 13, verse 19, made us to understand that God says, Vengeance is mine, which means if someone fights against you, don't fight that person back. Don't fight them. If you've been accused wrongly, don't fight. That's a fight for the Lord. If at your place of employment you get accused wrongly, why are you? That person that accused you, love them even more. The Bible made it clear. But God said, vengeance is mine. 
Don't be, don't go and start fighting a battle that is not yours. Sometimes when a battle comes before me, I always look at it and say, you know what, this is not my battle. When you keep miles, it becomes a cross you shouldn't carry. Why carry a cross that is not yours? Why? You feel pain in your heart and the pain doesn't go away. And you know you will be seeing this person every day. That is a cross you shouldn't carry. God said, love your neighbor as your what? Self. Read that first Peter so that you see what you should do a, to a cross that is from God and a cross that is not from the Lord. Uh huh. First Peter 5. Yes, 6 to 7. Under the mighty hand of God. It says, now, in order to understand the cross from the Lord, you have to follow it with humility. Humility means you humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. That is a sign of a particular cross. It says, humble yourself under the mighty hands of God. So, just calm down. Don't be desperate. Because if you are humble, you will not be desperate to get Nike shoes. You know you cannot afford it. Nike shoes or the best wear, you know you cannot afford it. Or you know your parents cannot afford it. Or you know you don't have a job that can give you that thing. Say, so humble yourself. Meaning, don't be desperate. Uh -huh. That he may exalt you in due time. You see, look at it. Says, God will exalt you in due time. A cross that is from God. If you don't humble yourself, he will not exalt you in due time. But if you humble yourself in due time, he will he will exalt. Exalt means he will elevate you. Exalt means you understood that this cross was from God and I carried the cross so effectively and God it has come to exalt me. This is the due time. Casting all your cares upon him. You see now? He cares for you. You see, he says casting all. He says, did he say some of your cares? No. He says all. Then why are you worried? Why are you worried? Why? For oh, God said, cast all. God, I cast all my fears, all my problems. Did he say fears or care? Cares. Cares. Now, cast all upon him because he cares about you. And then, Somebody will wake up one morning and start committing adultery and fornication and say, you are attracting worse cross unto you. One, is it that one or two things will happen. But one thing for sure will happen. Your soul has been sold to the devil. That's the one thing that will be sure to happen. Your soul is confirmed. Unless you quickly realize it, come back and say, God, forgive me. When you not beg, God is a merciful Father. He will forgive you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you not say, God, please, I have wronged you. I went and carried a cross you never meant for me out of disobedience. God, I beg you, this cross that I have carried out of disobedience, forgive me. You give me good life. You give me good family. You give me good children. And yet, I still insist on disobeying you by carrying a cross that is not mine. God forgive you. God, I guarantee you will forgive you. He's not, he's not a God that... He, he said he loves you. God did not just create you to destroy you. No. You did, did not start having children to not show them the ways of God. No. Now, when you now... Another way we carry cross unintentionally without knowing it and without making inquiries is the kind of lifestyle. Ask yourself, is your lifestyle more important than your life? Which one is it? Sometimes we carry a cross because our lifestyle is more important than our life. Wow. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone who is a drunkard, you see, will drink themselves to their grief. Why? They have decided that their lifestyle is more important than their life. Ask yourself, if your lifestyle is more important than your life, that means you are about to carry or already carrying a cross that is not yours. Because your lifestyle becomes the cross you are carrying and then at the end of the day, you are leading yourself to an early grave. You are destroying your life. You are destroying even your family. You are destroying people who cares about you because people who cares about you really pays the price. Ask yourself that. What kind of lifestyle are you living? Pastor Jude is not following you everywhere. That's how you know. 
you are carrying a cross. Because First Peter uh, uh, 5, 6 to, to 7 says, cast all your care. You cannot take your lifestyle and cast it onto God. No, no. It's not, a, it's not possible. The Lord said, don't do these things that will destroy you. Yeah, that's what you're doing. So it means your lifestyle is more important than your life. If you find out that your lifestyle is more important than your life, then you are carrying a cross that is not meant for you. Chant hallelujah. hallelujah. If you find out going to club and places that are very destructive is a lifestyle of yours, then you are carrying a cross that is not meant for you. If you find out that you only care about your joy and peace in your family, you don't care about the rest of you, what your kids think or what your wife thinks or what your husband thinks, it's just me, I, and I am going to be the I. It is a lifestyle you care more about your life and the life of all who are around you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In conclusion, from the day you were conceived, a cross has been laid for you. From the day God thought about creating you, is a cross of delayed pregnancy or delayed fertility. It could be a cross of delayed husband or a delayed wife. God had the power to do all things. It could be a cross that God said, okay, all your life, you will, people will be stabbing you in the back. You will do kind things. You find your heart doing kind things, but people keep stabbing you in the back. It's your cross. Just carry it with a smile on your face. You find yourself pleasing people, but they don't care about how you feel. It's your cross. It's not a bad thing. And you cannot find yourself changing like, I, I'm not helping people anymore. No, it's your cross. You have no choice. A cross, that one, you have no choice, but God will keep giving you victory. And the way you know that God is giving you victory, one, he will bless you through your children. Amen. Two, he will give you long life. Three, when others are crying of pain, you are crying of smile. You are smiling. <laughs> Chant hallelujah. hallelujah. So you have to understand that. It is a cross. So one way you know that's a cross is it becomes part of you and you know that others are you 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 you're getting the wrong impression from people around you. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. You have nothing to do with lifestyle this time around because this is a cross from the Lord. Look at Jesus Christ healed, 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 but yet they, they kept on stabbing him at the back. At the end of the day, they said, persecute him, no, crucify him, crucify him at the end of the day. That's how you know you're carrying a cross for the Lord because you will do something kind to someone and they are crucifying your emotions. They are crucifying your effort. They don't, they don't care. But God cares. God does what? Cares. Now, the conclusive part that I want to share with you is last, which is how you know you're carrying a cross and not yours is fear. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Fear is another factor. God has already given you the wisdom to go to university or college to become a medical doctor but one part of you is afraid god already given you the wisdom go and read and be a medical doctor that's okay or go and read and become an art artist that's okay because you understand the material but the devil know how to plant fear in you you start doubting your your your, your courage you start doubting your determination Fear is another way you know you are about to carry a cross that does not belong to you. Don't be afraid. You are good in math and yet you are afraid to go and study to become an engineer. You are good in something but you are afraid to hit the thing and carry the thing head on. When you start getting afraid then if you begin to carry a cross, how does it become a cross? You become depressed. You know your heart said, I can do this thing. You know you can do it, but you are so afraid. And when you become afraid, you begin to carry a cross that is not meant for you. You are so able to do it, but you become scared. You become worried. But God has given you every resources around you from your family, from your wife, from your husband, from your children. Say, Dad, Mom, we can get it done. You become afraid. Or you become afraid for someone else. So it becomes a cross onto your heart. It becomes a huge body. But I can do this thing. But I'm afraid I will fail. Don't be afraid. You're not being desperate, but you're being determined. Amen. So hallelujah. hallelujah. That is 
how you know because fear is one of the biggest manufacturer of carrying a cross that does not belong to you. You run away and you don't follow that desire. You run away and you don't move to get it done. And then all your life you live in regret. And that's the worst thing you can find yourself regretting your life. The last quotation. Someone read what is written in the book of Isaiah for me. Isaiah 46 verse 4. And Isaiah again 41. Isaiah 41 verse 13 to 14. Amen. Isaiah 46, verse 4. Uh huh. No. Yeah, 46, verse 4. Even to your old age, I am he. It says, even to your old age, it is Yahweh. And even to gray hairs, I will carry you. Even to gray hair, God said he will what? Carry you. I have made and I will be here. Even I will carry and I will deliver you. He said he will carry. No, why are you carrying it? God already guaranteed you these things. Just those cross he gave you, carry them. That's all you need to worry yourself. Yeah. Don't fight the battle that does not belong to you. He said, even to your gray hair, even to your old age, that is the Lord speaking to you. Amen. Chant hallelujah. hallelujah. <clears throat> don't, but when you carry a cross that is not yours or you don't understand it's not your cross, <laughs> you, you, death comes on time. That's why you cannot be afraid. Don't be, a, don't be, don't, be. now, now, don't mix because you're being precautious of coronavirus, then that means you're being afraid. No. That's not the point. So don't mix both of them. Continue being precautious when you go out there. But what I'm saying is, don't be afraid of all the things God have laid for you in your life that you must go through. He said, even to your even to your grave, he will, carry, he will deliver you. All you need to do, don't disobey God. If you do not disobey him, you will find your, you, you will be, hey, God will do you well. Say, everyone say, Yahweh will do me well. He will carry my cross. He will deliver me. All the days of my age. In the name of Jesus. Say it and say it with determination. He will. The last quotation read, that Isaiah 41, 13 to 14. 41. For I, the Lord your God, will uh -huh. hold your right hand. He will hold your right hand. Amen. Saying to you, uh -huh. fear not. He says, you see, carrying a cross that is not yours is where you become afraid. But God has already said, He says, do what? Fear not. Uh huh. I will help you. He said, He will help you. Now you will go and carry a cross that is not yours. God already said, He will help you to carry the one He imposed in your life to test your faith. Uh huh. Say, fear not again. You men of Israel. You men of children of God. I will help you. He says again, he will help you. Amen. Says the Lord. Says who? Says who? The Lord. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. Your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. So my brothers and sisters, from here on, try as much as possible to understand the cross that belongs to you. And the cross that is not yours. And focus on the ones God has brought to your way. Pray about it. Like David will always say, Lord, I'm going to fight the Philistines. Should I go? God will say, go, my son. You see? God, if you look in your life, there is a particular thing that is always occurring in your life. Amen. If it's a particular thing, you know it's not your own doing. That's the cross from God. And he's telling you in the book of Isaiah 41, 13 to 14, that fear not, he will help you. That thing will rock up. You will apply for a job. No way. God has a different purpose and a different plan. He will not let you see suffer or shame. May God continue to bless and keep you all in the name of Yeshua. Amen. Shout hallelujah.